What's up guys, Justin from ST2, bringing you another review, update, overview, whatever the hell you call it. I'm bringing you another video. Another video. I should just say that. So, I get this question probably twice a day now. And I don't have that big of a following, but people are sharing the photos and it's getting around and people just ask. How do you map that night vision? Or what's your helmet set up? And they see the videos and they see me wearing it and they want to know. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you what I wear for headgear, minus the mesh mask. Video on that later. Night vision setup, camera setup, comms, head-wise. So everything that I wear on my head... Phone is disturbing. So everything I wear on my head to protect my pretty little face, hair, head, the eyelashes, just, you know. Alright guys, so obviously the biggest piece of headgear is the helmet itself. So we'll just start off with the base of the helmet, how I built it, and move on up from there. So we'll start off with how I built it. Uh, it started off life as a TMC airframe. Uh, the only thing TMC now remaining is the shell itself, which I have painted uh, a brown snakeskin pattern. Uh, there's another video on that, I'll link it in the description below. And uh, basically what I did after that fact was I installed Velcro on the uh, outer shell uh, so that I could take the cover off if I wanted to go on the green team uh, if it was head gear color requirements and whatnot. From there I installed Skydex pads on the inside as you can see here and uh, I've got a couple different sets of Skydex. The black ones are uh, an older generation of Skydex and these, uh, the gray ones are the new ones. I can't remember exactly which pads they are but they are the combat ready helmet ones. This is the Opscore H nape. Uh, get rid of the TMC one, it's absolute garbage. Moving on, I've got the Cry Arc Rails and the Cry Multicam Airframe Helmet Cover, which took me eight months to get. From there, I, I originally had an Opscore Vac Shroud, but I replaced that with the Wilcox L2 G05 mount, which I've painted and worn it down the all operator cool guy goodness. Uh, on the right side is my Princeton Tech Charge MPLS. Uh, on the back, I've got a ferro counterweight with or ferro counterweight pouch which houses a small one pound weight and I could put batteries in there if I wanted to. Um, but I've got batteries in my vest so I don't need that there. Uh, call sign patch. Uh, but that is my SNS Manta. Uh, somebody was asking me in the picture why I have the tape up here. Uh, it's actually pretty common now. Uh, the reason they put that up there is it reduces the the amount of light that's emitted from the back of the strobe and it basically means it's only going up and it won't go backwards. So guys wearing night vision on my team are not going to get blinded by the strobe being so bright. It's not directly in their face, it's just going up. If it's in IR mode obviously, if it's in green mode it still goes up and uh, I mean I don't usually use it in green mode so it's all good. On the other side I've got my Contour HD which is velcroed on. I sewed on some velcro, as you can see here. It's pretty sturdy, it's not going anywhere, and if it does, it's lanyarded on. So, if you do choose to go that route, I would definitely choose to get a lanyard. So, big question I've had since I went to lightning strike is what night vision do you use, or what night vision is that in the photo? Blah, 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 night vision, night vision, night vision. Are those PVS 15s, are this? So, I've answered it in a million comments, but they don't seem to circulate too well. Uh, these are not PBS 15s, although they look like it, and they're not Anvis. I wish they were, but alas, no. They are Sightmark Ghost Hunter dual tubes. So, there's a version that comes with one tube, and this is the two tube version. I've done a few things to change it up that so it's not necessarily stock. First off, the thing you'll see is it looks a little longer and that's because I've added uh, my version of sacrificial lens covers which is just a clear cover that flips up and I have that on there because it's decent enough for what I need and it was like eight bucks a piece so it seemed uh, pretty simple and pretty obvious to buy. Behind that is just the um, the lens cover it came with, it's just a plug-in, simple black lens cover with a pinhole, so you can use it in the daytime just for testing. I leave those in there when I'm not using them in game because it just ensures that they are 100% not affected by the light in the daytime. These have taken shots before from pretty far away and they're fine. Up close I'm sure they wouldn't do any good, but 
but it would slow the BB down enough that I don't think it would damage the lens. So that's why I have that there. Uh, I would opt for a uh, sacrificial lens made out of Lexan rather than just plastic, but it doesn't go on. Behind that, I've got bikini covers for PVS 15s. Uh, these are for if I'm doing uh, an op indoors that can go from bright to dark really quick and I don't want to damage the tubes, I can just quickly put this front cover over top since this cover is not uh, black and I don't have time to grab the smaller black one and insert on the inside. Now this isn't really going to be a review of these but I'll give a kind of insight. So I know I'm going to get this question as to where I got it, how much, um, all that kind of stuff. So, quick answer, I got them from Cabela's when I was in the States, and they were about $500. I think you get them straight from Sitemark for $600. Uh, go through Google to find deals or whatever, stores in your neighborhood that sells them. Uh, I'm not going to do a review so much as to say that for Gen 1 and the cost, you can't really do much better. Uh, they're dual tubes, so you, uh, you have some better depth perception than with a single tube. Uh, even in Gen 2s, I prefer these Gen 1 dual tubes over a single Gen 2, which is odd, I didn't think I'd ever say that. Something cool about this is it actually has two features, or two focus features. It's got the front tube, which dials for a perfect focus, it's like the major focus, and then the fine focus is in the back. As you can see here, this piece is not stock. This is the Wilcox dovetail and uh, my little mod to make it work with my helmet. Uh, they, they originally come with a little set screw in here that attaches to a head bracket, but I've removed that, added a longer screw, put some locking spacers here, and then put the dovetail on. Screwed it on and now it fits and it's solid. So it clips into the helmet just like PVS 15s. So to show you what I mean real quickly, just lock them in for you. See? Nothing to it. Now they're just dirty and they're not going anywhere. So there's what they look like down there. All that good stuff. Totally operator. Operator on a budget. Alright, so last piece of headgear, and yes, it's on my dummy mannequin head, because it's awesome, is, and this squeaky noise is going to kill me, so I left it up, is uh, MSA Sword and Supreme. These have to be modded to work with airsoft radios, uh, so Google how to do that. Nothing really to it. I had a different band on it. I put the woodland one on here because I kind of like the woodland one actually. Installed some velcro on the right side so I can rock a contour if I'm not wearing a helmet that day. And the eyewear, oh that sound. The eyewear in this uh, video on this mannequin right here are the Wiley X Gravity with the photochromic lenses so they change from clear to smoke gray when you enter a dark or bright room. So obviously it would go clear if you're in a dark room and it would go smoke gray if you're in a bright area that is lit like outside with the sun, all that good stuff and cool guy nonsense. So goodbye. They also come with a cavity which you can insert which makes them full seal so if you go to a game that requires full seal then you can just toss those in and you're good to go. We'll just do the helmet all together with the headgear and show you what it looks like.